Namaste everyone. I welcome you all who have joined us on the Zoom and through YouTube live to today's session of the talk. I hope all of you are doing well. Here in the monthly talk, we usually select topics related to Bharat, spirituality, diversity, customs and traditions or such great souls of Bharat who have played a very important role in the nation building. For today's talk, we have Ami Ganatra ji with us and she is going to share her insights on Bhagavad Gita. The reason this topic has been chosen for discussion in this month's talk is that we have recently celebrated Gita Jayanti on 22nd of December. I know all of us are really excited to hear today's talk. So without any further delay, let's start today's session. I request Ruchita ji to kindly chant the Sangathan Mantra. Ruchita ji. Ji, namaste. Om Sangachadvam Samvadadvam Samvomanansi Janatam Deva Bhagam Yatha Purve Sanjana Upasate Samanu Mantra Samiti Samani Samanam Manaha Sahachitta Mesha Samanam Mantra Mabhi Mantra Yeva Samane Naboha Vishaju Homi Samani Va Akutihi Samana Ridayani Vaha Samana Mastu Bomanu Yathava Susahasati O Shanti 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 I would now like to request the Shyaji to take her words. Ishya ji, you are not audible. Nest parity with a vision to connect women. I guess there was a technical error. We can move ahead. Anjali ji. Namaskar everyone. Today we are having Ami Ganatra ji. Ami Ganatra ji is an alumni of IIM Ahmedabad. She is a management professional, a devout yoga practitioner, a certified yoga instructor, and a student of Sanskrit and Indian knowledge systems. Her books, Mahabharata Unravel, Ramayana Unravel, and the latest one, Mahabharata Unravel 2, The Dharma Discourses, are not retelling or imaginations, but an attempt to go back to the original itihas and present the story, learnings, and nuances for what they are and make the epic accessible to all. It's an honor to have you. Welcome, Amiji. The floor is yours. Thank you. I was talking away in a mute. Okay. 
So Namaste everybody, Jai Shri Krishna. Very happy to be uh, here with all of you once again. Uh, the topic given to me was Bhagavad Gita. And I wasn't exactly sure what all should I cover because there's lots. To even begin with, to, to start understanding Bhagavad Gita, it is important to have a little bit of background as to why and when that happened. And even within that, there are quite some concepts that can be covered. So I thought, why not? start with asking all of you what is it that you have in mind let me take like four five questions from you about what is it that you, you are expecting what is it that you would want to know what is that question that's either making you curious or bugging you that you've always had in your mind related to Gita and Mahabharat part of Gita So it'll, it'll be really good if uh, you guys speak up and tell me accordingly, then I can share Yatha Samarthya, my insights about it. Jita Pasya. Hello, ma'am. Uh, ma'am, according to me, Gita is a very sacred text, especially of Hindu religion. And mm -hmm. I would like to know, like, what are the various paths to liberation or moksha, as we call it, okay. described in the Bhagavad Gita? Okay. Excellent. So, moksha. Okay. What else? Hi, ma'am. Namaste. 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 Yeah, ma'am, so my basic question about Gita is that we have a lot of texts, like Ramayana, Mahabharata. Hai. So, why is Gita so much that Gita is so much? Why is it that there are 18 texts? I think there are 800 texts around. And why are there 18 texts? Why is there a specific reason for 18 texts? So, hmm. maybe two basic questions Thank you. Like, first, why is Gita? Hi and is there any significance to that? Yes, yes ma'am. Okay. Great question. What else? No other question. Kisi ko koi prash nahi nahi hai. Uh, ma'am, uh, again. Ji. मेरा एक और क्वेश्चन है कि गीता के लिए मतलब अभी बहुत सारे मतलब ऐसे एक ट्रेंड चल रहा है कि इसकी पढ़े उसकी पढ़े तो मतलब बेसिक जो श्लोक है उन्हीं का ट्रांसलेट पढ़ना चाहिए या जैसे कि कुछ राम सुदास जी के जैसे गीता सुधा आती है या सुधा सागर आता है वो या फिर जैसे स्कॉन की भी बहुत चलती तो मतलब एक होता है ना कि ओरिजिनैलिटी कहां मिल सकती है उसको पढ़ने की एक ये भी क्वेश्चन है Namaste, ma'am. Namaste. Ma'am, I have heard people saying that Srimad Bhagavat and Bhagavad Gita are different. I don't understand if there is something or not, so I want to know. Srimad Bhagavat and Bhagavad Gita? Yes. Yes. Okay. Excellent. And? What else? Ma'am, Gita Ji or Ashtavakra Gita Ji, what is the difference? Okay. Gita versus Ashtavakra Gita. Mansi. Ji, ma'am, I wanted to ask like. अभी इंट्रोडक्शन में हमने सुना कि आपने बहुत सारी बुक्स की वापस रिलेविंग डोज बुक्स लाइक भगवत गीता और आपने लिखा है तो लाइक इवन एवरीबॉडी नोज कि गेट बैक टू वेदास और सब लोग कहते हैं कि लाइक दिस बुक्स होल्ड द सॉल्यूशन ऑफ ऑलमोस्ट ऑल मॉडर्न प्रॉब्लम्स तो क्या मैम आपने मतलब कैसे इन सब बुक्स को लाइक मैं मेरे को भी कुछ फ्रेंड्स वगैरह ने बोला था मैंने सब पे नहीं लिखा है मैंने केवल इतिहास पे लिखा है महाभारत रामायण पे Okay, so like, you might have read, read them actually, like, you have read them, both of them. A little bit on the Ved side. But your question is, ki, aaj, wo, how is it that they solve all the relevant problems of today's modern problems? That's the Jee. question. Hmm. Yes. Okay. Yes. Thank you. Yes, ma'am. Okay. 
ओके हाँ जी दीपाली दीपाली आपका आवाज ब्रेक हो रहा है अब टाइप चैट पे डाल दो ठीक है यू पुट इट ऑन चैट एंड निकिता यू कैन गो नमस्कार मैम नमस्ते मैम मेरा ये क्वेश्चन है कि जैसे कि बहुत लोग बोलते हैं कि अगर हम एक बार भगवत गीता रीड करनी स्टार्ट करें तो वी शुड कम्प्लीट इट टिल दी एंड लाइक बीच में हम छोड़ नहीं सकते लाइक इज इट नेसेसरी कि लाइक एक बार स्टार्ट किया तो पूरी करनी पड़ती है या बीच में छोड़ भी सकते हैं कि नहीं कर सकते ओके okay. ठीक है ओके मैम थैंक यू राशि हेलो मैम नाइस टू मीट यू सो so, मेरा सवाल आपके लिए ये होगा कि समवन फॉर समवन हु वांट्स टू रीड द गीता बट जिनके पास इतना फुल टाइम नहीं जो दे पाते हैं उनकी प्रोफेशन की वजह से तो इज देर अ शॉर्टर वर्जन व्हिच इज इजियर टू अंडरस्टैंड एंड जो डेली लाइफ में इंप्लीमेंट कर सकते हैं थैंक यू थैंक यू दीक्षा यस नमस्ते दीदी थैंक यू सो मच फॉर कमिंग बैक माई क्वेश्चन इज कि हम आई थिंक मोस्ट ऑफ आस बहुत सारे लोगों ने हम में से पढ़ा नहीं है बट आर प्राइमरी सोर्स इज मे बी टीवी सीरियल्स और द मूवीज तो वो कौन सी एग्जेजरेशन है जो सीरियल्स में इनकॉर्पोरेट हुई है या ड्यूरिंग द डिस्कोर्स ऑफ टाइम दे है महाभारत और द गीता जो के लिए तो महाभारत के लिए तो वील है तो नमस्ते आपसे बात करके बहुत खुशी हो रही है मेरा सवाल ऐसा था कि श्री कृष्ण जो है वो पूर्ण अवतार कहे जाते हैं और वो अगर किसी चीज का ज्ञान दे रहे हैं तो व्हाट इज द सिग्निफिकेंस ऑफ दैट सिचुएशन कि अर्जुन ने रणभूमि में जब सामने शत्रु को देखा और एंटायर सिचुएशन जिसके जिस जहां से गीता की शुरुआत होती है तो व्हाट इज द सिग्निफिकेंस ऑफ दैट मतलब वहां पे ही गीता कहने का बताने का क्या सिग्निफिकेंस है okay. ग्रेट थैंक यू नमस्ते मैम मैम मेरा दूसरा प्रश्न है कि मैम गीता में धर्म पर बहुत एम्फोसाइज किया गया है तो धर्म एग्जैक्टली exactly क्या होता है गीता में जो एक्सप्लेन है वो मैं जानना चाहती हूँ ओके और ठीक है सो धर्म इन गीता ठीक है तो लेट मी स्टार्ट विथ जो अलग अलग गीताएं हैं भागवतम भागवत गीता अष्टवक्र गीता ये सब में क्या है ठीक है तो गीत गीता का अर्थ क्या ठीक है ये एक्चुअली ना पता नहीं हाँ ठीक है अच्छा सॉरी एक और मैसेज था ओके ठीक है सो लेट मी लेट मी टेक द क्वेश्चन विच एफ कम और उसके बाद जो चैट में वो मिलेंगे तो अष्टवक्र गीता इस सब में क्या फर्क है पहली बात गीत गीत गीते इति गीत जो गाया जाता है जो कहा जाता है वो गीत है तो वो तो कोई भी गा सकता है कोई भी बोल सकता है कोई भी कह सकता है राइट इसलिए गीत बाय इट या गीता बाय इट सेल्फ डजेंट मीन एनी थिंग अष्टावक्र गीता जो अष्टावक्र मुनि ने कही दैट इज अष्टावक्र गीता या देर इज व्याध गीता महाभारत में आता है जो व्याध ने कही ऐसे बहुत सारे अलग अलग जो ऐसे डिस्कोर्स दिए गए हैं जिसमें इस प्रकार के टॉपिक्स कवर होते हैं अबाउट परमात्मा आत्मा पिंड ब्रह्मांड वगैरह वगैरह हाउ टू टेक डिसीजन 
रियलिटी क्या है सत्य क्या है असत क्या है वगैरह वगैरह जो टॉपिक्स कवर होते हैं वो बहुत सारे अलग अलग संभाषणों में हैव बीन कवर्ड इन मेनी सच डिस्कोर्सेज सो ऑल दो आर कॉल्ड गीता एंड द नेम इज गिवन अकॉर्डिंग टू हु सेड इट इसीलिए श्रीमद भगवत गीता श्रीमद भगवत गीता क्यों क्योंकि भगवत भगवान के मुख से जो हम तक आई है कृष्ण के मुख से हम तक आई है अष्टावक्र एज एस एड अष्टावक्र ऋषि की है उस प्रकार तो ये तो गीता गीता का भाग हो गया कि अलग अलग प्रकार की गीता है क्या वो सब सेम है नहीं बाय एंड लार्ज टॉपिक्स विल बी सिमिलर बट दे आर डिफरेंट दे आर डिफरेंट आल्सो इन द सेंस ऑफ हु सेड इट ठीक है तो इसीलिए व्हेन वी टॉक अबाउट भी अगर हमको ये महाभारत वाले गीता की बात करनी है तो महाभारत में भी बहुत सारी गीताएं हैं बट श्रीमद भगवत गीता इज द वन विच वी कंसिडर्ड एज दैट सेक्रेट टेक्स्ट जिसमें जनरली सब कुछ ज्ञान मिल जाता है जो किसी ने कहा ना कि वो है अब वो क्यों है दड़ाल कम अब भागवत और श्रीमद भगवत गीता में क्या फर्क है भागवत जो है एक तो वो तो पुराण है पुराण किसका पुराण श्री कृष्ण के जीवन के विषय में उसमें बताया गया है और भी बहुत कुछ है उसमें मतलब आई थिंक ग्यारह या बारह कैंटोज है उसमें से दस दसवा जो कैंटो है दैट इज हार्ड कोर कृष्णा कृष्णा उसके पहले तरह लॉर्ड ऑफ अदर स्टोरीज इज वेल बट दैट इज डिफरेंट जो माना जाता है कि व्यास जी ने लिखा बट वो पुराण है वो महाभारत का भाग नहीं है ठीक है इसलिए श्रीमद भागवत तो अलग ही है उसमें बहुत सारी और वो लिखा भी भक्ति रस से गया है श्रीमद भगवत गीता जो है वो महाभारत का अंग है इट इज अ पार्ट ऑफ महाभारत एंड इट कम्स इन द इन द भीष्म पर्व सो देर आर एटीन पर्व इन महाभारत वन ऑफ देम इज भीष्म पर्व भीष्म पर्व का जो शुरुआत है उसमें भगवत गीता आता है नाउ भीष्म पर्व कब आता है वेन द वॉर स्टार्ट ठीक है उसके पहले द एंटायर स्टोरी हैज हैपन बेसिकली वी नो द स्टोरीज ऑफ द जन्माज ऑफ कवराव एंड पांडव फिर उनके बीच कौन सी लड़ाई होती है मतलब जो भी उनके बीच जो स्ट्रगल होता हो रहा है जो कजन के बीच एंडिंग इन टू सबसे पहले इट स्टार्ट विद द डिविजन ऑफ इंद्रप्रस्थ या राधा द डिविजन ऑफ हस्तिनापुर इन टू इंद्रप्रस्थ और हस्तिनापुर का जो भाग दुर्योधन को मिला इंद्रप्रस्थ वॉज अ बैरन लैंड खांडव प्रस्थ करके उसको ये लोग मेहनत से दे वर्क रियली हार्ड मेक इट वेरी प्रॉस्परस सिटी रात सूय यज्ञ वगैरह वो लोग वहां करते हैं एट दैट टाइम दुर्योधन इज वेरी वेरी जलस एंड द होल दूत क्रीड़ा incident that happens the game of dice and all that is played out then the vanvas happens 13 years was the time for which the pandavas had to go to vanvas now the vanvas they have lived through of the 13 years and they are at a point where pandavas are like we should get our rajya back okay now duryodhan is in no mood to give the rajya back he's like he's he's coming up with many reasons he's like no this is not the reason they they've not first he starts with no no they've not finished their one verse then uh, when everybody said nahi nahi ho gaya 13 years are over he'll be like something else he's like no i don't want to live with them yeah that's where it really ends but the elders of the family and the pandavas they are like yuddha we are talking about a war that will happen if we don't get indraprastha back why because indraprastha was rightfully pandavas yeah so they were not asking for something that was not theirs they had lived through the condition that was imposed on them when they lost that deceptive game of dice fairly they had lived through so it was only right that they got their indraprastha back but duryodhan was not ready yeah so there's a whole round of negotiation that goes on कौरवों की तरफ से मैसेंजर्स आते हैं पांडवों को पांडवों के साइड से मैसेंजर्स जाते हैं वहां पे वगैरह वगैरह व्हेन दुर्योधन इज जस्ट नॉट रेडी टू रिलेंट इवेंचुअली युधिष्ठिर से ओके ठीक है लेट्स अवॉइड द वॉर एज फार एज वी कैन दे डोंट वांट टू गिव अस इंटरप्रेस डज इट मैटर बिकॉज़ अ वॉर इज नेवर द फर्स्ट ऑप्शन इट कैन नेवर बी द फर्स्ट ऑप्शन अ वॉर इज वेरी वेरी डेडली इट लीड्स टू डिस्ट्रक्शन व्हिच एवर साइड विंस या that win is actually not worthy of a win anyways because even the winning side loses quite a bit there's a lot of destruction aur isme to both sides was family 
us taraf aur us taraf people knew each other they grew up with each other they were family at the end of the day so we were talking about destruction of an entire family right so they're trying to avoid the war as much as possible to the extent where yudhishthir says give me only five gowns give me only five villages you keep everything else we need five villages so that our rozi roti can go on at least we can make some living we can make a decent living so give us five villages baki you keep indraprastha also if that stops the war duryodhan provoked by karn puts his foot down and says nothing do it to the extent that when krishna goes as a messenger to hastinapur with this message of five gowns duryodhan turns around and tries to arrest him only now everybody on the kaurava side including his father dhritarashtra eventually has this feeling that duryodhan is going to lose and the pandavas will win if a war is going to happen and they all try to convince duryodhan to ensure to so that the war doesn't happen but duryodhan is adamant and he is backed strongly by his one friend karna who adds fuel to fire he keeps provoking keeps provoking provoking keeps provoking duryodhan is like nothing doing what five villages i will not even give a sui ki tok jitna zameen kya panch village ek sui ke jo tok hota na needle ki to tip jitna utna bhi i will not give why because i can't just live with these guys a war has to happen nothing doing now what do you do when a war is imposed on you one which you did not want one where you willing to even compromise what is your rightful share what do you do at that point is the question should a bully be allowed to have his way all the time or should one put down his foot and say especially who is also a raja and say no this is enough no more injustice can be tolerated enough is enough beyond this would be kayarta and once the bully has tasted blood he will go out harassing whoever he wishes because he has power he will go troubling anybody and any everybody so that cannot be allowed right at some point justice dharma nyay has to prevail that's when a call was taken ki okay enough abhi to duryodhan has crossed all limits when he tried to arrest krishna and this it it was now there was decided ki war to hona hi hona hai now it is not as if any side was ever thinking ki war nahi hoga andar se to pandavon ko bhi pata hi tha ki the war is going to happen and they were also preparing for it that is why arjun was sent for 5 years to uh, to the sindras palace or whatever indras nagri as they say to get as many divyastra as he can so everybody knew the war is going to happen also these guys were kshatriya they are they had they had fought a lot of wars throughout and enough uh, information about them is also given so it's not as if they were against fighting a war or anything they were kshatriyas fighting a war fighting a battle was what they did so then both sides arrive at the battle field and bhishma dronacharya they are all sitting samne ke they are all standing with their rathas on the on the other side and this side the pandavas and all their allies are standing and there is arjun now arjun is one of the best warriors i think easily the best warrior in the entire mahabharat katha yeah and the pandavas are also pinning their hopes on arjun of course bhim bhim is also excellent bhim is also excellent so it's basically bhim and arjun on which the pandavas have pinned their hopes of victory on so they reach that battlefield and the armies are standing samne samne also the pandavas have been waiting for this day a lot of injustice has happened to them as well right so they were also waiting for this day when they can take on duryodhan but now when they are standing samne samne arjun who is the greatest warrior as i already said on the pandava side tells krishna he says senayor ubhayor madhye between these two senas take my rath he achu the krishna between these two senas you take my rath so 
Krishna does as told. And this guy who has fought innumerable wars till then. In fact, at one point, he has fought even with Shiva who had come in the Vesh of a Kirata. Yeah. Unke bhi wo lada hai and even Shivji was, uh, as we are told, was all praises about the skill of Arjun. So he's like, he's looking at his uh, relatives, his grandfather, his guru and all of that. And suddenly he's shaken. He's like, my hands are all moist. My body is freezing. It's becoming very uh, still. I am not, it become very frigid, becoming very frigid. I'm not even able to hold my Gandiva and whatever I'm out there to do is just completely wrong. What am I doing? And why am I doing? I'm out here, standing here and I want to kill my own people. Instead of that, I'm better off dead. I'm not going to fight. Let them fight with me and kill me. This Durbuti Duryodhan, because of him, I am having to kill my own people. What's the point of all this luxury? What is the point of all this kingdom? If the people for whom I want this kingdom are not going to be there. Hence, hey Govinda, now you'd say, I cannot fight, he says. I cannot fight. And he drops his Gandiva and he sits down. Now, if Arjun backs out, the Pandavas would have lost the war already. Also, Arjun's concern is not a trivial concern. It is a very genuine concern. And a person who has even a little bit of compassion and empathy will have that concern. Who am I out to kill? The only thing is that it is not as if this had happened suddenly. Just that he forgets it at that point in time. The Pandavas, Krishna and their allies had done every single thing in their potential to avoid this war. But when it was imposed on them because of the stubborn, adamant behavior of Duryodhan and Karna, what do you do? Should you fight or not? Right? So here is Arjun, who is completely deluded. He doesn't know what is the right thing to do at that point in time. Should he fight or should he give up everything and go away? The situation that Arjun is in, he's so confused. He's like, it's better to go away. I don't want to fight this. Let them enjoy everything. Let them have my Indraprasa. Let, let them have everything. I don't want anything. Okay. So that stage he is in, where he wants to run away from the war. Why? Because he thinks killing the family members is wrong. So if you see, Arjun is in an ethical dilemma, which we call Dharma Sankat. On one end is his family. There is his Kutumba Dharma that he has to fulfill. On the other end is Nyaya Dharma. Because how long? They were, they were also warriors, right? They were Kshatriyas. It was their duty to ensure dharma is established, justice, justice is established in the society. You have to set the right precedence. If you allow the bully to have his way, it will be a situation of matsinai. Matsinai is a situation, which is the jungle law, law of the jungle, where the big fish eats the small fish. The bully will eat the small fish. Aisi society will sustain it, aisi society will toot jayegi. So, there is a duty, a dharma of a kshatriya that Arjun has to fulfill. And there is this other duty on his head, which is a kutumba dharma that he has to fulfill. Now, what should he do in that situation is the question. And that's where Krishna then counsels him through various approaches. Okay. And that counseling of Krishna, the discourse which Krishna gives Arjun, so that Arjun can make the right decision at that point in time and do it knowingly, willingly, and become his own self again. 
get out of that confusion and become his own self again. For that, Krishna gave a discourse. And that discourse is what we have as Srimad Bhagavad Gita because it is Krishna saying it. Now it is Krishna saying it as a, as a Vyaktitva in Mahabharata. However, as the dialogue proceeds, we see that it is not really Krishna. It is through Krishna that the divine Tattva is speaking to Arjun to help him clean the cobwebs of his brain, of his mind, and see clearly what his kartavya, what his swadharma is. And that goes on for about like until the 18th chapter. And the beauty of the 18th chapter is that after all these discourses, that child is not a monologue. Huh? Aisa nahi hai ki Krishna bole ja rahe, bole ja rahe, bole ja rahe. Aisa nahi hai. It is, a, it is a dialogue. Krishna says something. Arjun says, then Arjun has another question he will ask. Again, Krishna will try to resolve that question. Again, Arjun will come back, ask another question. And that goes on and on and on and on till the 18th chapter. So it is not a one-way monologue. It is a dialogue. And the questions Arjun asks are so beautiful. It's like if we are in that place, then we also have that question. Those are the kinds of questions which Arjun is asking in that situation. Imagine all of us being in any such dilemma, in any such dharma sankat. Now I'll come to what dharma sankat is, but basically at that situation, ki ye kare ki wo kare, kya kare, right? That is the question. Now ye kare ki wo kare, kaise kare, how do we know which is the right option to take? There is a possibility that both options we have are not the good options. We still have to take a decision. How do we then take the best decision and a decision which will not make us feel guilty afterwards? Yeah. How do we ensure that if we do something and then not become, you know, paap na lage, achha kaam ho, there is no fear in us after having done that. Wo stress nahi ki kya hoga, kya hoga. How does all that happen? How do we, how should we make the right decision when we are in that ethical dilemma? It is exactly that. And Krishna has dhire, 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 dhire helped Arjun navigate that. Then in the 18th chapter, now he is not saying, now you do as I am telling you to do. Then he says, I have told you everything. I have answered all your questions. I have told you more than your questions. Now, thinking through all of this, ye sab sunke, achche se sunke, you now decide what you need to do. Yatha echasi tatha kuru. You do what you think you should do. You do as you wish. And clearly by then, Arjun is like, no, no, my, my delusion has gone away. My moha has gone, gone away. And I will do what you have told me to do. I will fight. Because my confusion has now all gone away. I understand what you're trying to tell me and I understand what my dharma is right now. Yeah. So that whole discourse, the, that, that whole dialogue, so to say, is what we call Srimad Bhagavad Gita. Now, what is the significance? The one question was, what is the significance of this event? See, we all go through this kinds of dharma sankat in life. Yeah. And why we go through that, I'll tell you. But it is not as if this is the only discourse where the Jnan comes out the way it does. A lot of what you see in Bhagavad Gita, you see in many other texts as well. Yeah? So, Bhagavad Gita ke liye kaha jata hai. Like somebody mentioned Mahabharata, Ramayana, hai, Veda, hai, ye hai, wo hai, phalana, dhikana. Then what, why is, what is so special about Bhagavad Gita? Hai. Bhagavad Gita mein aisa kya hai that it is so special. Well, every text of ours is special in some sense. But Bhagavad Gita ke liye, there is a shloka which, which if I tell you, you will understand the significance of it. It says, Sarva Upanishad Upanishado Gavo Dogdha Gopala Nandanam Nandanaha Partho Vatsaha Sudhir Bhokta Dugdham Gita Mrutam Mahat. Sarva Upanishado Gavo. All these Upanishads, just say, Apko Gnan Milta hai. Yeah. The gnan of, of reality, the gnan of living, 
that the jnana of paramatma of atma all that that vidya that you're getting from all the upanishads yeah which is a bhag of ved only ved se hi sara aa raha hai ab wo sari gaye hai jaise all the upanishads are guys and dogdha gopal nandana gopal nandan basically krishna krishna is milking all those cows what cows the upanishads yeah he is milking the cows arjun is the calf so arjun is a nimitta for which the milk from through which the milking is happening and what is coming out of it the dud what is that dud gita amrutam this bhagavad gita which krishna narrates is nothing else but the sar the essence the milk of all the upanishads because there are so many upanishads understanding all of it reading all of it agar hamare bas mein nahi hai then the best is to at least understand the gita that will tell us this whole gyan of upanishads to begin with now what is all that gyan is going to talk about there is the first question asked about moksha now before i come to moksha arjun is standing there and thinking should i fight or should i not fight yeah at the end of gita krishna arjun says i understand and i will fight so remember this krishna has not asked arjun to run away from the situation the outcome which was expected was to face the situation head on and not run away from it that has been the <clears throat> outcome but why did that situation happen in the first place why did the confusion happen in the first place and then how is it relevant to us somebody said hamare liye kya relevance hai uska to dekhiye kaisa hota hai na in a society we all have a role to play every society and what is dharma first let's see what is dharma the question was what is dharma it is not just in gita gita comes from mahabharat and this dharma is the underlying uh, theme of all our shastra so what is dharma in mahabharat there is a definition dharyati iti dharma dharanat dharmiti ahu dharmo dharyati praja yah syat dharan sayukta sah dharma sah dharma iti nischay dharyati iti dharma that which upholds and sustains that is dharma because it upholds and sustains it is called dharma dharma sustains and upholds what the society the praja praja is all of us the society yeah and because it upholds the society it is called dharma only because it upholds it is called dharma so what is dharma dharma is the sustainability principle the overarching principle which ensures or allows the continuity the sustenance of the society or for that matter any system that exists yeah now what does that mean let's make it live let's make it real for all of us society is a big thing right we are very chotu chotu in that society ke sustenance mein hamara kya kaam par we all are a part of some system this whole body of ours is a system also right if we have to sustain this body of ours we will have to live in a certain way we will have to ensure we eat good food we do good exercise we do not overeat we live a disciplined life वगैरह वगैरह if we do all of that our body will be healthy if our body is healthy we will live longer and as long as we live the body will continue to work better however if we work in a way that harms our body if we take food which is not good for us if we have a very undisciplined life then what will happen we are harming our body and by harming our body we are harming the system which will not sustain going forward right so to sustain the system that is our body we have to behave work in a certain way now let's extend this to the family a family is also a system in which all the members of the family are the stakeholders okay so if you want 
your family to stay strong now why do you want the family to stay strong first of all because in a family we get security we are taken care of especially as children yeah we get all all our uh, con con conveniences and comforts are taken care of vagare vagare so if a family is closely knit and strong we will get the benefits of that of being together being a part of that family but the family will remain strong if all the members are fulfilling their role towards the family a mother is doing her role a father is doing her role the kids are doing their role if one person says my way or highway i don't care about the family you only keep taking care of me but i will not ever do anything in return will such a family survive it won't survive so what does it mean for that family to survive every person has a dharma towards that family right because dharma is a sustainability sustain sustainability principle so we have the pita dharma mata dharma putri putri dharma putra dharma pati dharma all of that the kutumb dharma what is kutumb dharma that which ensures that the kutumb stays together and sustains if somebody behaves in a way which is against this the kutumb will get destroyed the benefits you are going to get out of that kutumb will also get destroyed keep expanding this to your profession to your community to your rashtra it's the same thing now see this at any point in time once we are grown up enough we are not a part of only one system we are a part of multiple systems we are a part of our office system we are a part of our home system we are a part of the larger rashtra system right so we have a dharma towards the family the kutumb dharma we have the uh, dharma towards the profession we call it the sevak dharma we have a prof uh, we have a responsibility towards the rashtra rashtra dharma yeah all these different different kartavyas or dharma we have roles that we have to play and it is possible that sometimes these dharmas come in conflict with each other what is that conflict should i go for my promotion discussion or should i stay home and take care of my child who is not well at that point in time very simple but a very true right happens with all of us ki kya kare should i take care of my office project because if i don't go and take attend that meeting i will lose that client but my son is not well what do i do do i have an option here to manage my son then i can still go but if i don't have that am i willing to lose my client again these are not like life threatening ones but there could be such right this is also dharma sankat profession ka dhyan rakhe ya ghar ka dhyan rakhe and what arjun is going through is just at a higher level of it right ki bhai main apna kutumb dharma nibhau ya the larger kshatriya dharma which talks about dharma sansthapan what is my dharma at this point in time because they are both conflicting right if he goes for the kshatriya dharma he will be violating the kutumb dharma the kutumb will get destroyed and on the other side if he goes to protect his family then what is going to happen the kshatriya dharma is going to get destroyed right the whole precedence is going to be set wrong in the society that jo itna stubborn hai who has to have his way why just because of his intense jealousy and uh, ego that person will have his way that cannot be allowed especially after all this negotiations that have happened and he is not willing to relent at all right so then that would have suffered then what should you do that is exactly the question that he is faced with which we are we also face with in our lives right so what is the relevance of gita it's actually through arjun that krishna is helping us navigate these situations in our own life at any point in time we are making a decision right everything even this यार आज नौ बजे हम ये सेशन अटेंड करें या कुछ और काम कर सकते हैं दैट इज ऑल्सो डिसीजन इवन इफ स्मॉल इट इज अ डिसीजन व्हाट डज द डिसीजन मीन इफ यू ऑप्ट फॉर वन यू विल लूज द अदर राइट सो यू टेक वन यू लूज समथिंग एल्स हेल्स दैट स्मॉल डिसीजन मेकिंग वी आर ऑलवेज डूइंग इन लाइफ समटाइम्स वी आर स्टक वी डोंट नो वॉट टू डू वाई वी आर स्टक 
more often than not because we are not aware of the outcome. The outcome, kya hoga, scares us. Like it is scaring Arjun, Kari Baba, they are all going to die. What will happen? Right? That not knowing the outcome scares us. More often than not, this care of the outcome actually stops us from doing so many things which we could have done. One of the single biggest factor that stops us from achieving our full potential is this fear of the outcome. Kya hoga, kya hoga, kya hoga. Are baba, aisa ho gaya to kya hoga. Aisa ho to kya hoga, right? It is exactly that. And Krishna is helping Arjun navigate through that situation. That itself is the biggest help for us. Arjun hai, but it is for all of us. That message of Gita. How do we take better decisions in our life? Because this conflict will always be there. Okay. Achha, ab isme moksh kaha se aya? Because you are right. Krishna is eventually talking about moksha also. But what is moksha? Because Upanishads talk about it. Atma, Paramatma, sab ki baat aati hai. Riya is asking, what does Arjun finally choose in the end? What happens? You tell me, what did he choose? Anybody? What did Arjun choose finally? Nobody knows. Come on. To re-establish the dharma. Absolutely. The war happened, na? The Mahabharat war happened. And Arjun fought in it. As I said, this happens in Bhishma Parva. This Gita part comes in Bhishma Parva. After which the whole Yuddha happens. So clearly he chose to fight. He chose the Kshatriya dharma over Kutumba dharma. Because as a Kshatriya, ensuring that the right precedence is set in the society is way more important than the smaller Kutumba. That again depends on his scope, right? It's the question of Hum versus Ambani. If we don't attend a meeting, we are fine. Somebody else will take care of it. But on Ambani, his empire, or rather there are like lakhs of people who are dependent on his decisions. So when it comes to him, somebody at his level, whose decision is going to impact such a huge group of people, if there he's like, Are, he can't do that, right? No, he will have to say, Baba, Nita, you take care of Isha. I will still have to go and meet the client because my one decision will impact the larger society. So it also depends on what is your scope and that will determine what we should do at that point in time. But anyways, I'm not coming to the solution of it, so to say, because that will depend very that will be dependent on every situation. Some situations may need you to select the kutumb over the company. Some situations may need you to select the company over the kutumb. How do you determine that? Or sometimes it might just be a third option. But how do you determine that? Ki is situation mein kya karu? Clearly, then that is about decision making. So how should you do that? Krishna says, to make any decision in life, okay, first I was coming to moksha, then, then let me come here, let me come, come get back to this point after the moksha point. So he does talk about moksha, but what is he talking about? Okay, what is moksha? Anybody can tell me, what is your idea of moksha? Getting over the I'm idea of materialistic me. possessions, I guess. Getting over the idea of materialistic possessions, okay? Somebody else was also saying something. I feel it is freedom from the cycle of birth and death. Right, okay. So the technical definition is very much that. Getting out of the freedom or uh, getting out of the circle of birth and death. But 
what does it mean to get out of law of karma or the uh, birth and death? Uska death, uska artha kya? Why does somebody want to get out of that birth and death cycle? Why would anybody want to? Why is moksha such a big thing? Does anybody have some understanding of it? And it's okay if you don't. I'm just asking. Detachment from in order Maya. To, hmm? In order to realize our constitutional position. Constitutional position as in? As in we are souls to uh, recognize that uh, inherent... Uh, uh, but why? Why? What is the need for it? Why man. does anybody desire that? The jiva wants to be one with the universal consciousness. Yeah, but why? Because what uh, is that going to give you? Ma'am, can so I say? We don't need hmm? to suffer from uh, different yonis. Ki, uh, okay. I mean, like we are different, like a mosquito or a kid. We have to go to yoni mein bar bar na jana pade so that we uh, are just energy. We are just energy. We are just energy. Okay. 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 Yeah. Huh? Yeah. <laughs> um, that people think that living a good life, having good things is luxury. But I but moksha matlab ke tum agar is uh, janjal se dur ho jao. So that's the real luxury. To be detached. Mm -hmm. to come back to square one. And you know, okay. be detached from everything. Family, materialistic things, everything. And just be there with your Atma and nothing right. else. Right. So, okay. You said be detached and others are in the chat are saying to get freedom from suffering because birth is considered long to form of suffering. To be satisfied because human being is never satisfied. Okay. So, essentially what we are saying is that we want freedom from suffering. That is the whole point, right? Hence, we want to get out of it. yoni pain, ye wo. The detachment is... Yes, but why the detachment again? What is the need of the detachment? The point is this. We want to be free from suffering. Free from suffering, matlab, we want to be in a state of continuous joy, bliss, by and large. Right? That state we want to be in. If we achieve that stage, of being in a state of Satchidananda, where we are not troubled by things going around us. We are not troubled by what somebody says or what somebody doesn't say. We are not troubled by what could be the outcome. We continue to do what we do while continuing to be in that state of bliss. Okay. The state of non-disturbance. If we are in that stage, we won't be suffering. But when can we be in that stage? When one, there is a sense of detachment. Now, what is that sense of detachment? Let's also understand that. But Krishna takes it to another level and he says, it is in this state, then we can also take better decisions. Okay. He calls this stage a state a lot of names, but one of them is Yogastha Buddhi or Sthita Pragnata. Or Gunatita going forward, but basically this. Thita Pragnata or Yogastha Buddhi. When you achieve that, you will have a sense of Samatva, equanimity towards good, bad. Because bad say you suffer, na? but without, with bad, with good and bad will always come together. It will not, will not just be good, good. So, if you have achieved that sense of detachment, where the good doesn't trouble you and the good doesn't exhilarate you and bad doesn't trouble you. You're still happy. That is yoga's the state. That sense of equanimity towards everything and anything. Now, if you are in that state of equanimity, by and large, you will take better decisions. How is that? Okay, how is that is the question. Because Krishna says, in that state, you will not be driven by Kam, Krodha, Lobha, Moha, Mad, Matsarya. Basically, why is it that we can't take right decisions? One is the, 
as I mentioned, the fear of the outcome. Other is the vrittis that we have. We don't know if we are taking a decision out of anger or is it good for us, right? Simple things. Somebody has diabetes. They shouldn't be eating that pedha. Very clear, this information to hai na? But when the pedha is kept in front of that person, he will start rationalizing. Are ek hi jeevan hai, jane do kha lete hai, vagere, vagere, all of that, right? How does that happen? It is not as if the information is not there. The information is there. And still, we end up making the wrong decision. Why? Because of that desire, that desire of the jeeb, of the tongue, of the taste of that pedha. That desire is so strong that knowingly I am taking a decision which is not good for me. Right? Driven by these desires of senses. But if I am detached to that taste, what will I think? Are, it's not good for me. I will not have. Simple. I will not die for that taste, right? It's not good for me. I will not have. This is the right thing to do. I will do that. But how will I know it is the right thing to do? Again, is it humanly possible? Sabse pehla question to hai. Is it humanly possible to achieve that state? Aapko, you think about this. yeah. You, there are lots of these reels also online. If you see, there will be a lady uh, who reels chalta hai ki a girl, in there is this boyfriend situation. And a girl, there is a reel ki how do I advise my friend who is in that boyfriend situation versus how I react in that boyfriend situation. Yeah. Or jab kisi aur ke saath hota hai, hum achhi achhi baate karte hai na, we know exactly how she should behave. If your friend is coming to you with a problem, you will tell her, na, ye to sahi hai, ye galat hai. Very clearly, you will see the problem. You will see what is causing to what is causing suffering to her. Very clearly. But when it comes to us, we can't see that. Why not? What is the what is the difference? I have been a consultant. Why do people get consultants to understand their problem and solve the problem? Same thing, the way we can see the problem going on with our friend, which she is blind to. You will tell her, this guy is not good for you. He's taking you for granted. But when we are in that situation, we will be like, nahi, 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 he loves me. We will just not see it. Why? Because of our involvement. Exactly. When we are involved, we are biased. When we are biased, we cannot see clearly. But when we are out of that, when we are neutral, when there is nothing for us to gain or lose, when there is nothing for us to gain or lose, we will be able to observe a situation for what it is. That is what is called the Sakshi Bhava. Can we develop that sense in our own situations? That Sakshi Bhava? If we can, then clearly we will make the proper decision, no? But how do we make that kind of Sakshi Bhava? Krishna is saying, by controlling your Kaam Krodha Lobha Mohammad Matsarya and by Indriya Jaya, by controlling all your senses, by not becoming a slave to your senses, by letting the senses enjoy when they have to, but you don't have to become a slave to them. Control them. Hold the reins in your hand. When you achieve that, that is a state of Sthita Pragyata. And you will be at peace with yourself. When you are at peace with yourself, you will make much better decisions. So, one of the takeaways from Gita is this. Can you start controlling your senses and controlling your mind? Basically, mind control. Can you start becoming more disciplined in your life? When you do, your buddhi will learn to be more disciplined and probably take the right decision driven by what is good and right for you versus what you like. And when you make that shift, you will know by and large what is the right thing for you to do. That is one. The other thing, which is one of the key points of Gita, and after that, I'll stop and let's see if I have missed any answers there, yeah? The other thing is a very important message. The one 
as i said one of the things which stops us from doing anything is the fear of failure fear of failure fear of outcome theek hai uske liye there is a very famous shlok in gita karmandev adhikaraste ma phaleshu kadachan you have adhikar only over your karma sanatan dharma believes in the karma siddhanta okay कर्म करोगे कर्म का फल मिलेगा वॉट कृष्णा सिंग इज यू डेफिनेटली हैव द राइट टू चूज वॉट कर्म यू परफॉर्म वंस यू परफॉर्म अ कर्म देर विल बी अ कर्म फल हाउ एवर वॉट दैट कर्म फल इज यू डोंट हैव अ कंट्रोल ऑन दैट यू कैन वॉन्ट अ सर्टन आउटकम but that outcome is not going to be based on what only you want so why is krishna saying that he saying the outcome is not in your control now lot of people think here our outcome is not in my control then why should i work that is the immediate question which comes so in the 18th chapter krishna actually explains this he says the outcome of any activity depends on five things okay which are these five things अधिष्ठान कर्ता करण पृथक विध चेष्टा एंड पंचमी दैव सो वन इज कर्ता द डूअर इफ द पर्सन डूइंग द एक्शन हैज नो एबिलिटी टू बिगिन विथ डजन नो हाउ टू डू और इवन इफ यू नोज हाउ टू डू डजन डू वेल द आउटकम इज नेवर गोइंग टू बी एज यू एक्सपेक्ट दर इज इट्स नॉट द प्रोजेक्ट इज नॉट टू बी सक्सेसफुल राइट second is the current the resources that you use the raw materials that you use if they are not good again you are not going to be successful third is prithak vidha chesha there is a process to follow if those processes are not followed half hazardly kaisa bhi kaam kar diya again you are not going to be successful the surrounding conditions deciding where and how that action has to happen if that is not properly thought through again you will not be successful however if all of these four factors are done even then there is a chance the outcome may not be as you desire and that is why to account for that if anybody of you does uh, financial projections or is in project management there is something that you consider what is that that you consider when you do your project plans anybody has come across that anybody has done that okay correct thank you shubha it's called the risk factor the probability factor the risk factor you will always have a risk factor accounted for margin of risk fact uh, safety margin absolutely that you will account for right that is not in your control come what may do what you want to krishna says that is panchamiti daivam that fifth factor is call it destiny call it risk factor call it probability call it what you want but that factor is not in your hands and that is why the outcome is not in your hands however if you don't work daivam kya karega अगर पहले चार ही आपने किए नहीं है तो दैवन किधर से काम करेगा फॉर दैवन टू हैपन द फर्स्ट फोर हैव टू बी डन टू द बेस्ट ऑफ योर एबिलिटी दैट इज वाई कृष्णा ऑल्सो सेज वेन यू रीच दैट स्टेट और स्टेज ऑफ इक्वेनिमिटी दैट योगस्थता यू विल ऑल्सो डू थिंग्स टू द बेस्ट ऑफ योर एबिलिटीज दैट इज वाई ही सेज योग योग कर्म सु कौशलम achieving excellence in what you do is also called yoga anyways so these four you have to do to the best of your abilities only then the daivam factor comes into action so it is possible daivam might work in your favor it's possible the daivam might not work in your favor then what and hence krishna says that is not in your control but unless you work and find out you will not know hence with what bhav should you work because one of the things which arjun has is arey bapre kya ho jayega wo mar jayenge ye hoga wo hoga krishna says karma phala tyag 
you do your activity to the best of your ability taking care of everything and then leave it because you have given your best if you have given your best you will be at peace uske baad let things let the divine tatva let bhagavat tatva take over have that shraddha that is important but if you don't work to the outcome aayega hi nahi na the outcome will absolutely not be according to what you want so you have to work and give up the desire for a specific outcome have a desire have a goal but once the activity is done accept what comes and if you act with such a bhav of acceptance you will take the right decision because you will do something to the best of your ability so those are the few things krishna says of course he says a lot of things but i think if these two are understood we we'll un we've understood at least part of gita yeah there are there are lot more dialogues lots more uh, the karma siddhanta the sankhya concepts the daivik concepts the bhakti yoga lots of things that he speaks about but i think these two if we understand even a little bit yeah most importantly start disciplining start becoming more disciplined in our life in general towards everything and anything that we do yeah that is one so when he talks about yogastha buddhi how to develop and all that in the sixth chapter he says yukta ahar viharasya yukta yukta cheshthasya karmasu yukta uh, sapnav bodhasya yogo bhavati dukha yukta sense of balance sense of moderation sense of appropriateness in everything that you do khana peena don't eat too much eat as much as you need acha lagta hai to bahut kha liya nahi acha lagta hai to bilkul nahi khaya no that can't be the reason you should eat because you need it and it is good for you yeah aisa bhi nahi hai ki bhai kaam hi kar rahe ho kaam hi kar rahe ho no entertainment no that is also important yukt aahar ar vihar yukt yukt karmasya chest uh, yukt yukt cheshthasya karmasu even in the actions that you do even in the work that you do we talk about work life balance krishna is talking about that only yeah sense of balance sense of appropriateness swapna va bodhasya in sleeping and waking ah 10 10 ghante so rahe hain aisa bhi nahi ya 2 hi ghante so rahe hain so hi nahi rahe nahi that is not good sense of discipline sense of moderation in everything that you do that will eventually translate into you developing the mental discipline the mind will be in the control when the mind is in the control you will become more objective towards everything in life the more objective you are even about yourself you will end up taking better decisions one and second do your best and leave the rest if you do with that how the fear of failure the fear of outcome will not stop you and you will perform to the best of your ability again not easy for us to reach there but thoda thoda bhi wo awareness se bhi shuru karo na it's good enough yeah so to me these two are amongst the important messages of gita and there are many others but i'll stop here and i'll go through the questions which i may have missed till now so the question was on moksha so moksha as i was saying getting out of the birth cycle is one thing the way i see it is what do you achieve getting out of that birth cycle the sense of bliss can you achieve that sense of bliss in this life yes how by becoming sthita pragna by becoming sthita pragna stable buddhi stable wisdom by becoming yogastha by samatvam yoga uchyate they said sense of equanimity towards everything so that can be achieved now only try for that we don't know what's going to happen after birth and death but one of the things of moksha is that achieving that state of bliss uh kaun si geeta i think um the question was there are lots of geetas which one to read right uh how do i say this i personally prefer yeah i personally prefer the simple translations of gita press however many people prefer iskon there are many others who prefer 
Uh, actually, even Chinmayanand in RK Mission translations are good. I like those also. Some of the commentaries are also good. Chinmay, Chinmay, uh, Chinmay, uh, Swami Chinmayanand's commentary is also very good, which I really like. Yeah. Some prefer ISKCON as well. I would say try out different ones. Shlok to sabme same. Okay. Shlok bhi sabme same hoga. Translation bhi by and large same hoga. Thoda thoda farag hoga depending on which sampraday you come from. Or rather the writer, the author comes from. Wo thoda thoda farag ho sakta hai. The commentaries is where there is a lot of difference in, under, in the interpretation of certain things. But you will have to see what works for you because this is very personal. So try out a few and you will see. One other tip I have on that is if you know your mother tongue or any Bharatiya Bhasha well, prefer reading it in that as well. Keval Angrezi Angrezi mein mat padho. Because for me personally, when I read it in English versus when I read it in Gujarati and later on Hindi, I think the Gujarati thing really changed or made me understand Gita way better than what the English version had. Yeah. So abhi to I always have at, at least Hindi, English or Gujarati, English or something like that with me. So that is one tip I have. Ki definitely, if you can, if it comes, if it comes, then you should read Is there a shortcut for Gita? Yeah, Gita is 700 shlok. Okay. So you read it slowly, slowly, slowly. It doesn't matter. So if you don't read it once, you'll be scared. I don't believe that. Okay. You started, you didn't do it, you didn't do it. No, I told you what Gita is about. It's about helping us make better decisions. So, there is no problem with this pop-up. At least, I don't believe this. Approach it with a sense of reverence, with a sense of shraddha, is very different from approaching it with a sense of superstition. Shraddha will not be done, so we will not understand. Shraddha will not be done. Shraddha is what? That Gita has a lot of wisdom. Many people have gained from it. If I have not understood something, then the issue is in my understanding. Let me think over it again. That is Shraddha. Yeah. That definitely I'm going to gain something out of it. Jo bol rahe hai, there is a meaning to it. Let me not dismiss it if I don't understand something. That is the Shraddha Bhav with which you approach this text. I think that that Bhav is important. How you study. But as nahi pura kiya ek bar mein, ek sitting mein to paap lag jayega, aisa kuch nahi hai. Consume it slowly, I will say. I will say. Or there are a lot of good lectures of Gita online. In fact, I just finished a uh, eight session Gita course. Uh, but uske alawa bhi, there are online lots of good courses. Swami Swaru, uh, uh, Swa Sarva Priya Nanji ka hai, Professor Mahadevan ji ka hai, Chinmay Mission ke aur Swamiyo ka hai. If you're traveling, you can keep listening to those ek ek ka lectures on different chapters of Gita. That will also help. साथ में अगर आप बीच बीच में पढ़ते रहो तो भी ठीक है बट अगर केवल आप सुनोगे ना द डिस्कोर्सेस दे गिव दे आर आल्सो वेरी नाइस एंड इजी टू अंडरस्टैंड द कॉन्सेप्ट्स विल बिकम इजीयर सो दैट इज अ गुड वे ऑफ अप्रोचिंग एज वेल लिसनिंग टू द लेक्चर्स इंस्टेड ऑफ जस्ट रीडिंग इट या बट अगेन हां एक बार शुरू किया नहीं खत्म करोगे तो पाप लगेगा आई डोंट बिलीव इन ऑल दैट टेक योर टाइम स्टडी इट प्रॉपर्ली इन फैक्ट व्हाट आई आल्सो बिलीव इज इट कम्स टू अस व्हेन वी आर रेडी टू गेट इट so, if you start with start, it will not happen. Eventually, it will happen. Yeah? Okay. Uh, what else? Veda, how to solve the problem? I already told you, right? This is the gist in general. And I explained dharma and the gist of what Gita is talking about. It's about dharma sankat and making good decisions. Chodo uh, Bhishma, I already spoke about. Shorter version, I did. Situation significance, I also spoke about. And dharma, I explained Anything else, people? I think we are, we are way beyond our time, but I'm happy to hang on for a bit if you guys want. Again, I have told you only two concepts. There's a lot more to this. There's a lot more to Gita. Not possible to cover in a 40 minute session. But yeah. Haan, Jiria. Hi, good evening, ma'am. Ma'am, first of all, I want to really thank you for coming to the platform and addressing us all. Uh, Ma'am, my question to you was that, uh, so we talk about from what I understood that there are a lot of things in Bhagavad Gita because there's an entire emotional conversation going on between um, Arjuna and Krishna, where there's a conflict between Kum Dharma and Kshatriya Dharma. So my question is that how do we place, put it in a hierarchy, like what to put above the other? Like why Again, it is going to be very contextual. There is no one answer okay. to it, depending on the situation. 
in this case it was very clear theek hai because arjun also knew he was just confused not all situations will be like this then what is the answer how would we know that is why krishna is talking about developing that buddhi which is the yogastha buddhi which allows you to see things for what they are objectively and taking a call if you can see things objectively taking decisions is easier so the whole question then is how do we develop that objectivity that yogastha buddhi that's where he is actually leading us he is not giving an answer ki ye karo ya wo karo he is saying how should we make decisions how do you develop that buddhi which will allow you to make better decisions which is yogastha buddhi how can that happen when you are your when your mind is under your control or not driven by kaam krodh lobh mohammad natcharya then you will know so the whole point is developing that yogastha buddhi right thank you so much पॉडकास्ट चैनल बहुत सारे हैं यू जस्ट हैव टू गो एंड सर्च डिफरेंट थिंग्स माइट वर्क फॉर डिफरेंट पीपल देर इज प्रोफेसर बी महादेवन के लेक्चर्स देर आर ट्वेंटी फाइव सेशन ऑफ गीता लेक्चर्स ऑन माई नॉट लेक्चर्स वी हैड ग्रुप डिस्कशन ऑन माई चैनल एज वेल आई डिड अ गीता सेशन रिसेंटली आई डू इट वन प्रॉब्ली लेटर इन दर यू कैन फॉलो मी बट प्रोफेसर बी महादेवन सेशन आर ऑल्सो वेरी गुड सर्वप्रियानंद जी सेशन आर वेरी वेरी गुड चिन्मय चिन्मय विजन के जो गीता सेशन होते हैं वो भी बहुत अच्छे होते हैं so pick your pick your pick whatever you want you follow certain guru unka suniye bahut bahut ho ne geeta aisa topic hai jispe aisa koi nahi hai jinhone nahi likha ya nahi bola hai ma'am we all know what should be done still why most of the time we end up doing exactly the opposite i explained that why do you think so in fact this is a question which arjun asks अर्जुन से अथक के न प्रयुक्त न पापम चरती पुरुष अनिच्छन भीमाश्नयोगुणाचर्यसेजिंग फ्रॉम दैट पोजिशन सिंपल नो पता है वो पेड़ा खाएंगे तो डायबिटीज के लिए बुरा है पर मैं क्यों खा रही हूँ क्योंकि मेरे को मेरे टेस्ट पे ही कंट्रोल नहीं है मेरे जीप पे ही कंट्रोल नहीं है पता है अगर सुबह उठ के मैं जाना है जिम पर मैं क्यों नहीं जा रही हूँ क्योंकि यार नींद पे ही कंट्रोल नहीं है डिसिप्लिन ही नहीं है कि रात को सीधा सो जाओ इट इज वन थिंग टू नो द अदर थिंग टू डू वाई डोंट वी डू वॉट इज स्टॉपिंग अस फ्रॉम डूइंग दिस अनडिसिप्लिन माइंड एंड आवर सेंसेस which think they should have only their way we are controlled mm-hmm. by our senses rather than we controlling them how to make geeta interesting and cool for them that are pehle swayam to seekh le you will know once you know learn yourself and there is no need to make it cool it is cool enough if you really read and understand it मुझे स्पाइडरमैन बनना है या मुझे ये बनना है या वो बनना है वाई इज इट लाइक मुझे अर्जुना की तरह बनना है और एनी फॉर फॉर दैट मैटर लाइक एनी ऑफ आर you know there are so many so many brave people have been there in our in our own history in our own motherland so why is there a lot of western influence which is still there you tell I me why that you are watching no? priya once like your yeah, brother is watching no ha why is it why is he watching that because i think there's a lot of western influence i mean obviously like we do tell him but there forget western no influence na क्या अर्जुन पे बुक्स नहीं है क्या हनुमान जी पे नहीं है क्या स्टोरीज नहीं है सब है वाई इज इन समबडी सिटिंग एंड टेलिंग हिम दो स्टोरीज इन द फैमिली मोर ऑफन द नॉट वी ऑल्सो डोंट नो वी टेक इजी वे आउट देन देर इज अ लिटिल बिट ऑफ प्योर प्रेशर 
but can parents not play a role definitely they can i think what happens more often than not and don't take it as a criticism this happens in my family and everybody's family right we love to talk about these things and blame everybody except us apne ko problems of bahar hi rakhe which are influencing us but can't we do anything about it aren't there good series which they can watch yes in fact there are there's this legend of ram phalana tikana which are also very good how yeah. did he see a spider man to begin with now i'm not saying bachcho ne kuch nahi dekhna chahiye ye sab main nahi keh rahi hu theek hai there has to be a balance no no no, no i completely ha? understand that but then so but then i'm just talking but as the option not hai. just him i know i know i'm not i'm just using yeah. your example i yeah, yeah. don't take my answer as directed to you i'm saying in general right what is happening there is a ha- is happening in every family main bhai to keh rahi hu mere parivar mein bhi wahi hai but whose responsibility is it to change those preferences or at least influence those preferences bachpan se parents i refuse to believe parents don't have a role here they absolutely do but uske liye they have to do research they have to know to begin with kai baar even when i do ramayan sessions and all and i'm doing one starting jan 7 day ka ramayan session people will ha hamare bachcho ko kara do i'm like bachcho ko kara denge bachcho aapko bachche aapko prashn puchhenge aapke paas uttar hai kya नहीं तो बच्चों के साथ साथ आप तो करो है ना इफ वी नो इफ वी एल्डर्स नो तो बच्चा नो अदरवाइज आई आई विल टेल देम समथिंग यू विल गो बैक एंड कीप टेलिंग द सेम किसी पी टी बातें विच यू नो देन द बच्चा इज गोट बी कंफ्यूज आप लोग तो सब पागल हो जाने दो है ना सो फर्स्ट लेट आस लर्न लेट इज आर सेल्स अंडरस्टैंड वॉट इज द सिग्निफिकेंस एंड दूट डीप इन साइट फॉर लिविंग दैट दी स्टेक्स है they don't have any shortcuts wo aapko koi easy mm-hmm. solution nahi denge they will go to the core and they'll say discipline yourself yeah there are not going to be any easy solutions out there so it's tough but that is the only way if we really want to improve and learn life lessons so i genuinely urge all of you don't just stop at organizing lectures one of the good thing is that you're at least taking interest that's fantastic to begin with and i know we are all sunk so somewhere wo sanskar to hai hi hai hum sab mein and hamare parivaron mein bhi but that apart ensure you know our itihas mahabharat and ramayan not only from fictional stories know it from valmiki ji rachit ramayan know it from vyas ji rachit mahabharat the insights there are very very different to begin with yeah much different than what the entertaining fictional stories make them wo bhi padho there is no problem balance as i said in everything entertainment is also important but realize the value these texts have especially geeta geeta ka to aisa geeta works like magic once you start engaging with the text the text actually engages with you it's almost as if krishna is engaging with you aisa lagta hai aap kai baar aap wo problem mein ho and you'd be like yaar samajh nahi aa raha and you end up opening some page of geeta and there you feel like ah this is what it is now uska arth ye nahi hai ki it is going to tell you ye karo ya wo karo no it will tell you an approach ki how to think about it it just happens that's the beauty of geeta to give it a chance do go through it study it and keep up keep that shraddha that there is something really profound in this shuruaat mein nahi bhi samajh aayega in fact har baar padhte hain to har baar kuch naya samajh aayega and that is perfectly okay but give it a chance make it a part of your life thank you so much Thanks. Thanks a lot, Ami ji. That was a very engaging talk. I'm sure it's going to evoke everyone's curiosity and inspire us to delve deeper into this topic and share our thoughts with others as well. I would lo- like to invite Nivedita ji to recite the Shanti Mantra now. Nivedita ji. Namaskar. Om Sarve Bhavantu Sukhina Ha. सर्वे सन्त निरामया पश्यंत मा कचि दुख भवे शाति 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 So do we have any more questions 
we would like to ask 